Hey guys, Zach with Blade HQ here. I'm sitting down with Lucas Burnley. How you doing? I'm good, man. Good, good? good, good. He's going to teach us how to maintain a pocket knife. But before we dive into that, some of you guys had some comments in a video. We had a video together. It was Shot Show 2018, yep. just this Earlier last January. This year, yep. And you guys think that me and Lucas Burnley look like twins. Aww. Yeah, I don't see it, dude. I don't see it. No, anyways, let's jump into this. Everything that you have to do to the knife is, is a kind of a subtle adjustment. So if you're gonna lubricate the knife, you don't need to douse it in oil. You're gonna add a couple of drops of a high quality oil like, um, I like to use nano oil. Yeah. Um, so that works great. Um, you know, you've got your driver, you've got, you know, whatever bits you use for that specific knife. Um, I usually have some kind of little uh, acid brush. Um, is, and I trim it up. Yeah, this is one that I personally don't do. So right. I'm interested when we get there, I'm interested to see how we use this. So a little acid brush, basically, if I've got bearing pockets that I need to get into, Q-tips, same thing. Cool. Um, I, I don't, with, with different types of finishes, like if you have a really high level finish, you don't want to rub it uh, with a cloth necessarily because you might, you know, scratch it with, you know, some of the grit that's yeah, coming you out, of, grit out of that pocket a, and yeah, then put it across and then the you finish. And yep. a brush kind of can help you get some of that away. If you're going to lube your knife, right. you don't want to dip it in a can of motor oil. Right, don't want to dip it in a can what's of motor the, oil. What's the, what's the proper function there? So, two thought processes there. Um, you can you can really easily uh, apply enough lube just by with just with the knife assembled. Yep. Um, I'm really partial to nano oil. Um, I think it's it's a really good format. It's not messy. Um, and so, if I was gonna you know work on something like this, the knife's fairly clean. I just want to add a little lube, basically. I would just add kind of a, you know, a small drop and then you, you just work it in and you can, you can go in and you can do it from the back side as well. Yeah, just a, a drop and that's literally all you need. Yep. Um, if, if you over lubricate something, all you're really doing is attracting more dirt um, and then you're creating basically a lapping compound um, and you're going to wear your knife out faster. Let's look at just the adjustment of like pivot, right? Okay. So like if I was gonna pivot, do I wanna get on here with my with my tool and spin it three times? Right, right, or, okay. So yeah. when I'm tightening pivots, I always start with the blade a little bit, you know, three quarters closed or, or right in there. Um, and the reason is you don't get a true adjustment if the lock's engaged, okay? Right. So for me, you know, usually right in there, always use good, good drivers. I think like having Weeha bits or something like that, something that's a hardened bit is really good. Um, everything should always be supported. So one of the other things that I see is, if you're in a hurry and you go to, you know, tighten this down and you slip, you put too much pressure, you're gonna put a big gouge in your knife. Doesn't matter if it's your $20 worker, yeah. but, it, but it really, really hurts if it's something that's special. <laughs> yeah, well, or you, you could've just prevented it, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, just prevent it. So basically, the way that I usually start with tightening down a pivot, um, say it's loose, I would go out and I would basically, go full, t I, would, I would tighten it, and this is the feel part that's really hard, but I would yeah. snug it up, right? right? So as of right now, way too tight. Way too tight. Okay. And then I would just slowly back off maybe, you know. Not even a quarter turn. Yeah, not like. even a quarter turn. And what you're doing is you're just trying to get just that feel. But if you, if you go a little too far, it's easier, it's easier to back off into the right position than to, than to go, into. yeah, that's what I've found. So. Um, I actually like a little bit of resistance on my blades. So, um, you know, the other thing, I guess at this point, we have so many different uh, kind of materials that are used in modern folders, especially. So you've got bearings, you've got cage bearings, you've got loose bearings, you've got nylatron washers, you've got phosphor bronze washers. And if you're used to one thing, your initial response is you want everything to feel like that one thing. Exactly. So I like resistance on my blades, right? So I actually, I tighten my bearings to feel like washers. Okay. Okay, a yeah. lot of guys, they want it to like yeah, drop the, open. The gravity drop, yeah. For me, a knife's a tool. I like to have to actually intentionally open the blade. Um, if I let go of it, I don't want it to fall shut on my finger. Totally. Um, so yeah, that would be pivot adjustment. Diving a little bit deeper, um, if we want to disassemble the knife, um, same thing. Look at it, figure out, figure out how you're gonna take it apart and in what order you're gonna do that. Exactly. Um, one thing that I always do is I never loosen any screws with the blade closed, right? If you've got a highly finished, you know, blade, something like that, or Damascus or a hand rub finish, 
what's going to happen is the lock's going to spring, it's going to slam your blade into the frame, and you're going to get scratches, yep. right? So basically, same thing. I kind of go either full open for this. One one nice thing, okay, uh, little little digression. Uh, some knives don't have uh, like a like a stop like a pivot that that has an anti rotation. Right. So one way that you can do an anti rotation yourself is to engage the lock. Okay. That puts pressure on the pivot and allows the screw to turn freely. Right. So. Yeah, I'm a personally whenever I do a knife because I don't pay enough attention enough to know oh exactly which pivot this right. is. I just open the sucker all the way up yeah. and go at it. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's a perfect way to do it. Um, I I always support myself, so yeah. like I always have like some point of contact so that, you know, same thing, like you'll notice, like even when I'm going in with a screw, like I'm using my finger to guide. And that's because normally I'm working on a bunch of finished product that I really, really don't want to damage. Right, like you don't want to remake that. No, I don't want to remake it. And I'm completely OCD, so <laughs> what it takes for me to remake something is not very much. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so, so far we've, we've completely removed the pivot and now we are removing the backspacer screws. Okay. Now I would say one thing that I do in this process is, so I work on a lot of cars and motorcycles. Yep. So I've got a little magnetic bolt. Absolutely. And uh, I got a little toolbox for all my knife stuff. Similar, not a, not a cool bag, but a little toolbox. Right. And I've got a little magnetic bowl in there and that's actually where I'll put all my pieces. Not all the pieces are magnetic, but for me it helps just kind of wrangle right. my parts, right? right? Right, And I notice you've got them all laid out nicely there. Yeah, and that's that's a big part. One of the things we want to do is not lose anything. Yep. Um, the longer I make knives, the more I find that the ones I really enjoy are the things that I make that are simple. If I can reduce the amount of parts on a knife, I'm, I'm very, very happy, right? So, I mean, at its, at its base, I mean, this knife has a few little details. So, okay, so we've got, we've got pivot rings, right? Okay, so those guys drop out. You know, there's the pivot, and that's everything. I mean, anybody can do that. Anybody can keep track of it. You just have to show care to yep. what you're doing. You know, so um, yeah. From here, if this was if this was something like I'd been out for a while and my knife was really dirty, like this is where I would take it. Um, and there's you know things like Windex. Windex is great. Um, you know, regular isopropyl alcohol, things to wipe down. Um, and I mean, from there, it's, it's really basic. So, you know, I would make sure your bearings don't have grit on them or your, uh, your washers. Yep. Uh, one thing that I do try to be aware of is the orientation of the washers. Yeah. Uh, and that is, I would say it's probably overkill, but it's something that I like to do. So I like to know, was it left or right? And how does it fit? If I'm gonna oil bearings, um, what I like to do is I like to put everything in place. So I would put my pivot in, I would put my washer down. Um, I really like I really like the number three, so I always do like three little touches of oil. OCD, like I said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Blade goes back down, and this this is kind of falls into that same thought process of the way that you take it apart. Um, you don't want to scratch anything, right? So I kind of have a process for going back together. From here, I would take you know this washer. I usually assemble my uh, scale side with my backspacer, and then I put that on as um, as one unit. I like that tip. Yeah. That way you're not having to pivot and then trying to open and close. Exactly. And back so on. This, uh, the stop pin's already you know set into that side of the frame. So basically, all I'm doing is settling everything down. Yep. You you end up doing a lot of pinch grips and stuff. Then you know just watch your edge. Yeah, the pivot ring. Um, and then from here, this we can go into a kind of a little fun adjustment stuff. So um, I usually, I'll put my pivot in and just kind of just kind of snug it down a little bit. Let me actually do this. On my bench, I have about 10 drivers. <laughs> so, so you're never having to I'm, trade back Yeah, I'm never trading back, and they're all <laughs> color-coded. and Nice. Okay. So you tighten down the pivot, and then from there, you're gonna tighten up the backspacer. So one thing I see, and over the years I've seen a lot is, you know, comments about blade centering. Um, the, the, what people usually try to do is the blade's off center, so they, they tighten down the pivot. Well, okay, 
in in some cases that works. If your yeah. pivot's loose and you tighten down tighten down the pivot, the blade might center a little better. One trick that works really really well is to actually apply some lateral pressure as you assemble the knife. So, say if my blade was off center, uh, say to, it's usually to the to the scale side. Yeah. Okay. So completely counterintuitive, but the way that I would do it would be to, to loosen the pivot, pinch right in the center of the knife, loosen, loosen, apply a little bit of pressure, and then just tighten down those screws. And what happens is it gives it just a little bit of torsion yeah. and it helps that blade center up. It works really, really well. That's interesting. I've actually never seen that trick before. I like yeah, that a lot. Yeah, it's it's really strange. Like I'm kind of I'm kind of one of those like all thumbed idiots who's just like, oh, just tighten it down a little bit more. Right, and that's <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, me personally, I would rather have a blade that's a little bit off center. Yeah. Than a knife that I can't open. Yeah, I don't super stress my blade centering. I don't get crazy about my blade centering. I want right. my blade in between where it should be, but I'm not. Right. You know. Well, and it's different. Like on the custom side, like I want my blades centered. Course. Like yeah, that's we take pride in that because it means your blades ground correctly. It means yep. all your components are fit properly. Yep. Um, but things wear. You yep. know, every once in a while I'll get like you know an older knife that I've done that's that's worn in the blades off center, and a lot of times just that one trick totally takes care of it. I like that. So cool. Uh, one really neat trick is. Uh, you know, this because these techniques work on you know any folder of like any price range. So yeah. you could be working on your your twenty dollar knife or your thousand dollar you know flipper or whatever. Um, I use a Draftsman's uh, graphite. Yeah. And you can basically, if you get a sticky lock, just apply a little bit of graphite right to the lock face, and a lot of times that'll help with lock stick. So it's a really small um, kind of application right but but it helps the lock to wear in big results yeah, yeah. big results yeah. yeah and I actually like that you're using draftsman pencil obviously you're a pro you do this way more than I do right what I'll do is I'll just grab a number two pencil yeah and sharpen any the end any up real quick yeah work. exactly yeah. and get it yeah. down on there but yeah it, but it works great and uh, I'll even use a sharpie sometimes yeah sharpie cool sharpie one. works great too um, if w one of the things that works with the sharpie is because the like the ink is a little bit wetter than the graphite it gives it that initial few uh, pops of opening but then dries yeah and so if you use oil the oil stays oily and you don't want to lubricate the lock face necessarily that's not what we're trying to do so totally it's the basics right on i love it any other tips or tricks um really i think that's i think that's about it you talked about the sharpie keep one cool. of those in my kit um yeah. i keep a little set of files if i ever get like a burr or something but yeah. i mean really this stuff is is, is just super basic um very user friendly and you know make a game out of it it's a puzzle I like Get that. the right tools and, and figure it out, yeah. Cool. So have the right tools, take your time. Take your time. Love it. Well, thanks. Right. Appreciate hey, it. Happy to do it, man. Yep.